Is there no quality control in the US anymore? Look at this f dent. This yeah. is like a reject. Oh this is God. what you get. Guys, this really sucks. Hi, I'm Christian. And I'm Vera. And in this episode, we're gonna assemble the lower end of our 64,000 kilometer cracked engine Land Rover Discovery 4 TDV6 3.0. Everybody knows that the Ford Dagenham crankshaft of the Lion V6 is top-notch technology. Just screwed up in design. If it just would be two inches longer. I think we can install this crankshaft. It's gonna last as long as all the others. Maybe 60,000, like maybe. <laughs> you guys remember our previous video, all right? We actually filmed that this morning before work and now we are after work and we are in the next video. We're gonna have to clean out oil holes. We can't rely that Ford did this for us. Cleaning the engine block. You have to trust me that I cleaned it sufficiently with the complete German energy I have available to me. Yeah, he did that at 10 o'clock at night, so I was not awake to film any of it. Now everybody knows that the King's bearing have a way bigger oil delivery hole. And oh shit. Okay. They opened this up to match about the size of the block. The OEM bearings have a much smaller hole. I don't know if this is really a good idea to have that hole opened up because it changes the oil distribution in that engine. So hopefully somebody used those bearings before successfully and we are not the first ones. Oh my God. The engine bearings from King's are made for a housing diameter of 75.000 to 75.029. You need to gauge your bores precisely and then choose the correct bearings. And cheap brands on the internet, including some vendors in the UK, do not even know their dimensions. So they just tell you it's the best in the world. So you better check twice, otherwise you don't even need to put this baby together. Oh my God. I actually had to use a file to get out the big gouge, okay? I made one of those apprenticeships where you had to file two weeks in a row. I'm almost 100% positive that this is not going to harm my engine. But it's not about me, it's about what Vera thinks. I'm actually not worried when I get into my discovery. We're going to put this in the front on one. Maybe I was too harsh with everybody. Do we have to redo that? No, we're not going to redo that. So you have to emery cloth the back side of the main bearings. This coating is not supposed to be there and it eats up one or two microns and it's going to make our gap too small. It's all clean. Those, they are all clean. I took extra care of cleaning all the oil galleries out with spray cleaner, with compressed air and later on I soaked it back in WD-40. I cleaned all the main races here with this emery cloth. This does not take off any material, but you can see that the surface is absolutely clean. You also feel certain manufacturing defects on here from shipping and handling. Make sure there's absolutely no spot. There's no scratch. See my fingernail still catches here. I don't want to show that to Vera because no, yeah. first assembly step is the squirters. So they get tightened to 11 newton meters. Pulling the main bearings into the block. And we're using a very light ATF fluid. This is not assembly loop. And we coat the back side of the bearing that allows the bearing shells to slide into place much easier when they receive their crush. When you scoop the bearing in, it builds up a little bit of debris right here and here from scooping it in. So you want to make sure you wipe this off right here. If you so eyes... we messed up already twice today. <laughs> but it's not on the camera, okay? <laughs> and we messed up yesterday the entire day. <laughs> Check this out. Bearings are installed nicely centered, oil hole down, all clean. The bearings always sticks over a little bit. That's called the bearing crush. This is pushing the bearing down into the housing. We all know the 3 liter and the 2.7 liter has a forged, fillet rolled, induction hardened, ground and balanced crankshaft. State of the art technology, but unfortunately a complete design screw up. Our manufacturing code is 230522 at 1156 
So just before lunch and we hope that's not a bad omen because everybody was already ready to go and you can actually read out each journal and each big end diameter by the micron and yeah. based on this our crankshaft is basically having a dimension of 69.983984981983 on the mains this is all well within spec you can download this decoding chart on our patreon website I measure the TIR with a micron indicator. So what is a TIR? Total indicator runout. Oh, why don't you say that? Okay, so I measure the total indicator runout using a micron indicator here, and I make sure I don't sleep on the couch. Ah, oh, beautiful. Here I prove to you that this is reacting. So I got the crankshaft here basically in V blocks, and I spin it. And I want to say because it is not mechanically damaged and it does have no. TIR whatsoever, this crankshaft must be good. I don't need to go through and check now each journal because it's brand new and it cost me 1500 euros. Now for the plastic gauge check, the crankshaft gets inserted into the block now completely dry, which means once I put the crankshaft in, I can't spin it inside the block. And whenever you screw something like this up in front of your wife, you sleep on the couch. Yeah. One check I do now is I make sure I have axial float. Hear that? Yeah. No oil hole is on top. Otherwise, yes, you can't do your plastic gauge test. So I'm going to cut myself now four pieces of plastic gauge. And this is the plastic gauge made in the UK, okay? That's very important because it's a British engine. You don't want to come here with American kind of plastic gauge. It says on here... British made, okay, and the scale is much bigger, so old people like me can read it. In the US <laughs> style, you got this tiny scale and you're gonna fuck it up. This is for rough V8 engines, this is for British delicate engines, which already don't run when they come off the factory. You need a little bit of grease to hold the plastic gauge strip down. Then you place your plastic gauge strip right on top into the grease. There. And again, you don't want to rotate the crankshaft anymore now. Now note that this is a Gen 2 engine and the Gen 2 engine actually has the location tabs here. But we are using bearings without location tabs. So these are Gen 1 bearings. And now we're going to get all these comments that these are anti-rotation tabs. No, they're not. They're location tabs. And if you're not a complete dumbass, you will be able to seat them in the center without the location tabs. And no, they will not keep the bearing from spinning. If this bearing wants to spin, it spins. And we are installing them without notches. Because? We couldn't get them. The ones with notches were like a really unknown brand out of the UK for 420 pounds. And we are not building a Ferrari. We're building a diesel, which potentially lasts only 60,000 kilometers like it did out of the factory. So why would I spend 420 pounds to some crazy ass brand where I don't know where they made and what dimensions they have and nothing is known about them. Put light ATF on here to allow them to get into crush position much easier. Coating in the backside is gone. Yes, we showed that. You can see how the light ATF nicely squeezes out. Good. These are bolts we had left over and we use them only for this test and we're gonna coat them here with oil also under the head. And when I set it down, there is an interference fit for the bearing cap, it won't go in. So I actually gonna put in two bolts right here. This way I don't need to do any banging and knocking and distort the bearing potentially. Okay, the mains are numbered. There's a two stamp. Yeah, and there is a little arrow. Yep. This little arrow needs to point towards the engine front. No. Oh. <laughs> That's why I don't like to stop. We wrote the tightening procedure on first, second. Third, fourth, first with 40 newton meters, then with 90 newton meters, and then with 45 degrees. Now that's a 40 newton meter. Now we need 90 newton meters. 
So when you do the 90 Newton meters, you got to use a trustworthy torque wrench, okay? Like the one you bought at eBay for half the price and from an unknown source. 20 years ago. I turn the engine sideways. Yeah. It's easier for me to get the 45 degrees. 45 degrees. So now you gotta open them all again. I'm gonna open them in the same order I tightened them. And I'm gonna leave them a little bit snug. I don't get them all loose because I want to keep the crankshaft in place. And I'm gonna lift it off the crankshaft here first with a pry bar. Really smooth. It's just a. Uh, just a millimeter or so. And now I wiggle these out. Yeah. We'll find out if we have a complete disaster or not. So we got a 0 0.025 millimeter gap. An extremely small gap. It couldn't be any smaller. The engine specification oh, yeah. is 0 0.027. Yeah. So we are not quite in specification. <sighs> so maybe we should run then 5W dumbass on that engine. <laughs> That's narrower. This is very close, 0 0.038. This is absolutely perfect. So now we're running 5W40 again. Yeah, we're going to run 5W40 <laughs> on this one and 5W dumbass <laughs> on this one. It's definitely not 0 0.025 and it's very close to 0 0.038. So I'm happy with this one. Okay. So unfortunately on this one, the race fell out. Oh, here. Oh, the... Okay, the... but that's the spot. Oh, that's perfect. I know that. And this one is... Look it's at that. Almost a perfect fit. Yeah. We got one problem bearing in the front, okay? This one is too tight. It's out of spec. What I thought about doing there is not the most ethical method, okay? One of the OEM bearings is actually perfect still. Yes. It has no wear whatsoever two bearings which survived out of the original engine condition. Install them here in the front and do one more plastic gauge check to see if they get us into tolerance. Yeah. That would pinpoint then to a little bit of a weird tolerance on the king bearings, which would not surprise me. Take this baby back out. This bearing comes out. This is the side of the block where the block took a hit. It bent out this way. It didn't snap any bolts and it has no visible marks. Once we, we measured do... the bore of this block in an earlier video. I set up my bore gauge. It's a 75 millimeter for inspecting the bores in the block. Get that caliper here set. Now I set up my bore gauge to that dimension. This is a micron indicator, okay? Micron millimeters. So I'm hitting zero. Now I use the bore gauge set up and I measure each bore next to the oil hole in the front and in the back. Ah, okay. And here's the nominal. You see that? That's two hundreds plus. Now I go over to the other side and there we see it's conical. I write those two dimensions down. In the front, it was in micron plus 21 from nominal. In the back, it was plus 12. And I did measure that this hole is conical and that could already be enough to cause a problem. We are never going to get done. Check out how much play is in those location tongs, okay? That kind of tells you that it's not rocket science to get them into position. Now we are plastic gauge testing that OEM bearing. Perfect. Oh. OEMs. Look also how even the distribution of the plastic gauge is, which means we have no high and low spot. It's nice oval shaped on all of them. This one is actually the biggest one. Now remember the OEM has a smaller oil hole, but this oil hole actually supplies only one connecting rod in this engine block, versus the two inner mains supply each two connecting rods. Mm. So I think it's okay to have the one with the smaller oil hole in the front 
and it will actually not mess up that oil distribution as much as having a king bearing in the front with a larger oil load. Yeah. So we're going to reject this bearing from king here. We're not going to use it and we can move on. Yeah. Okay, so here we got the bolts we took out of the engine block. So they are OEM and they have never been tightened a second time. These are the bolts we used for testing. We're going to oil these up. The crankshaft goes in for the final time. This time we're going to use a really thick oil, 75W140, so that's a gear oil that's going to stay on there. says here bolts must not be used more than four times actually we're going to follow the tightening order much more precisely than we did during the plastic gauge test so it is going into 19 stages over 16 bolts just yeah. to make it really complicated probably a german design test. and we follow the tightening procedure for a rebuild we are not done yet <laughs> GoPro start. Bearing number four, we actually gonna tighten the inner bolts first, 40, 90 and 45 degrees, and then the outer bolts. So this one is reversed order. Inner bolts first. GoPro start. And we gonna punch mark all the bolts once. Next stage, do you remember what is next? The outer bolt. Measure torque to rotate. So now we need a bunch of adapters. Oh, look at that. Excluding breakaway torque. Yeah, watch it. You guys saw it, right? That engine's never ever gonna fail ever again. Watch it. Excluding breakaway torque. So even our breakaway torque is three newton meters, so that's good. We did a good job, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we only did it like five times and we made it look in the video like we did it only one time. What we're gonna measure now is the crankshaft float to see if that is good. This is a hundreds indicator. Pretty repeatable, 0.18. Specification for that parameter is crankshaft end float 0.21 to 0.43. So we are a little bit below spec. So that's what I wrote down in my protocol. Crankshaft end float without pistons 0.18. So we are 300 out of spec. Shit. And what does that mean? The lubrication gap for the oil is too small. That's what it means. But these engines anyway last only 64,000 kilometers. Oh my God. Here, come close and listen. Yeah, that's enough. It has float 0.03 millimeter. It's a dimension which you can't even represent in inches. So guys, that's it for this week's video. We got the crankshaft in. We are somewhat in spec, a little bit on the closer side. Um, on Fabian's engine, we were on the looser side. Yeah, and it's still running. Maybe you guys let us know if you think this is now a 5W Dumbass 30 engine or if it should run 5W 40 with that very tiny bearing gap. At this point, we want to thank our patrons a lot for their support and... We'll see you next Sunday. Okay, let's put some pistons in. Yes, of course. My workday is not over yet, you know. Just so Christian, that's not the first time you forgot to put oh, in a shit. plug. <laughs> Damn. Well, it's not important. It's only a speaker. So. <laughs> but you have to take half the Mercedes apart. Yeah, he forgot it six months ago. Robin passed his driver's license today. He will turn 18 next week. And the Mercedes will no longer be our backup vehicle. <laughs> now he's going to call and say, hey, Dad. I broke the mirror. <laughs> I'm gonna say no problem and he said well the car is lying on top of it. <laughs> well the handbrake is not working so we're gonna fix that today or tomorrow. It's called the emergency brake. <laughs>
the emergency brake, I call it a handbrake. It has some beefy lever. Working. Alles perfekt. 